Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, SQL, the next big thing in SCADA, how SQL is redefining SCADA. My name is Don Pearson, and I'll serve as the moderator for today's webinar. I'd like to welcome you today, and also say that uh, today we're going to be discussing how leveraging the power of SQL databases can revolutionize how you view and use your, you know, your SCADA systems. We'll discuss how using SQL with your SCADA can add value to your time series data, empower you to answer important questions about your business, and how it can save you time and also save you money. Just a quick look at today's agenda. It's really very simple. We'll begin with some SQL basics, then we'll discuss the wall between controls and IT. Then we're going to dispel some uh, SQL myths. And lastly, we will examine exactly how SQL changes SCADA and talk to our featured panelists and how SQL has also helped them. But before we dive into all that, I want to at least, uh, at least introduce ourselves. Inductive Automation was established in 2003. Steve Heckman is our, our president uh, and founder. And really, it, it, we've been the pioneers in highly scalable database centric and web launch HMI SCADA and MES systems. We are the fastest going HMI SCADA and MES software company in the world and continue and will continue to be so. We certainly have, I think, a strong interest in serving you as our as our customers and give you what you need in order to handle your enterprises, be they end user or, or systems integrator. We're in over 60 countries. You can see listed here a whole lot of industries uh, that we're in. There's, that's just a partial list. Um, if you look at the software itself, it's award-winning software. Oracle's Duke Choice Award this last year for innovation in industrial automation software and automation world leadership and automation readers choice for first team in SCADA. Um, I just want to read the mission because I want to actually invite you to uh, participate as many of the folks that worked with us over the years have and giving us feedback because inductive automation uh, is mission is to produce software that reduces frustration and increases efficiency in the industrial automation market. Our software facilitates the instant accessibility of meaningful information throughout the enterprise. We begin by listening, then acting on what we hear to inject innovation and unprecedented value into the industry. So what is Ignition? Web managed platform, web launch clients, and web launch designers. What can it do? HMI SCADA and MES functionality, historian functionality using any SQL database business applications using any SQL database, recipes, batch management functionality. Actually, practically any SQL application you can imagine, we can do. So with that, let me just get us started on today. Introducing our speakers, Travis Cox, Inductive Automations Director of Training and Support Services. Travis oversees our technical support services. He also has been teaching our training course since the beginning, He's trained hundreds of people on how to leverage the power of SQL databases with Ignition. Jack Homer, Process Network Plus. As a featured panelist, he is the president of Process Network Plus and has worked to integrate SCADA systems with companies from numerous industries around the country, and we're really pleased to have Jack with us today. And then Ted Previs from Sherwin-Williams. He's the Industrial Application Manager. He's had a lot of success combining SQL with their SCADA systems. And then Dan Prudeau. Um, Dan's the lead software developer at Sherwin-Williams, where he's been instrumental in integrating SQL with their systems. So we've got a strong panel today. Uh, Travis is going to take the lead. I'll turn it over to him now for more detail about what SQL is and how you can make powerful use of it with your SCADA. So with that, Travis. All right. Thank you, Don. Well, today's <coughs> focus is going to be on how to leverage SQL. So let's get into some basics on what SQL is and what relational databases are. So the first thing we need to address is what is SQL? SQL is an acronym that stands for Structured Query Language. SQL is a programming language designed for managing data in a relational database management system. SQL databases are the most widely used databases in the world. They are used in just about every industry to store information of all types. SQL databases are very popular for their simplicity, ease of connectivity, flexibility, and most of all, their ability to quickly query related data. SQL is not a type or brand of database. SQL is a standardized, structured query language for databases. SQL databases are relational databases, which are structured like a large spreadsheet with rows, columns, and cells, but are much more robust and powerful. 
Relational databases have the ability to relate common data across multiple tables and databases. This makes it very quick and easy to search data from multiple sources by using queries, which are basically custom-made questions you can ask for data. Despite the popularity of SQL, there are still controls professionals that still don't use SQL and don't really understand it. On the other hand, IT departments are very familiar with SQL and use it every day. The fact that controls guys and IT guys don't see eye to eye about SQL can be traced back to how each profession thinks when it comes to the, the proper way to store data. For controls guys, the two most common methods, the two most common methods for storing data are using PLCs for short-term data storage and a process historian for long-term data. For IT guys, when it comes to storing data, they think of SQL database as the all-purpose solution for handling both small and large amounts of data. Because of this difference of thinking, there is a wall between control guys and IT guys. The wall represents a lack of communication and understanding between IT and control professionals on the best way to handle data. Control guys are fluent in PLC programming, while IT guys are extremely comfortable with SQL. They just speak different languages, and as a result, neither side fully understands the other which can really affect teamwork and productivity. In order to get the most out of your SCADA system, this wall has to be broken down. To do that, it's imperative that controls and IT start communicating better, and using SQL will facilitate that communication. Most enterprise systems already use SQL, so using SQL to handle the data from your SCADA system just makes sense. SQL is compatible with other business systems, so it will be, it will be no problem to connect them with your SCADA system if you use SQL. Using SQL can result in total enterprise connectivity, which can have a huge impact on the processes and productivity of your company. With so much to gain, it's entirely worth it for controls professionals to take the time to learn SQL. It's easy to learn and very well supported. If IT guys, if IT and controls are on the same page with SQL, that kind of collaboration can really fuel innovation throughout the business. SQL databases are used all over the world, but they are noticeably underused in the automation software industry. To understand why, let's talk for a minute about some of the history between SQL and SCADA. Around the time that SQL databases were maturing, SCADA software was also going through a transitional period. One of the challenges it faced was continuing to provide real-time data as plants grew bigger, processes got more complex, and data became more and more plentiful. SQL was still a new technology and had not yet won the trust of those in the manufacturing industry. SCADA software developers decided to pursue proprietary technology alternatives to SQL. This was most likely done in order to make them more money, but unfortunately it was also, it also has put the automation software industry several years behind in technology when compared to other industries. Because many SCADA software developers didn't utilize SQL, much of the automation industry has not fully embraced SQL databases and they don't really understand them. Part of this result, part of this result is, of some, is some widely held misconceptions about SQL and SCADA. These are myths that we want to clear up today. Myth number one, SQL is too expensive. Myth number two, SQL is too complex. Myth number three, SQL and SCADA don't mix. Let's look at myth number one, SQL is too expensive. Like any new technology, databases were relatively expensive when they first hit the commercial market. However, times have changed and databases have become much more commonplace. Now purchasing a SQL database is very affordable and there is some very good open source database software available for free, such as MySQL. SQL databases are way more affordable alternative for storing time series data than any expensive dedicated historian. Myth number two, SQL is too complex. The truth is that databases are sim simpler than most people think. You don't have to be a full-fledged database administrator in order to work with a SQL database. Databases like MySQL are designed to be easy for beginners and very simple to install. SQL is very, is very widely supported. There are numerous resources such as, such as books, websites, and services that are dedicated to supporting SQL. And there are several how-to websites that, talk, that, that bring you through the basics of the language itself. It is also easy to find qualified SQL professionals to administrate your SQL database. And SQL is taught in almost every class, college classroom today. 
Myth number three, SQL and SCADA don't mix. The perception that SCADA doesn't function well with a SQL database is simply a false premise that has been perpetuated by SCADA software developers who are unwilling or unable to change. The truth is that not only can SCADA databases work effectively with SCADA, that SQL databases can work effectively with SCADA, but utilizing SQL unlocks the full potential of what SCADA software can do. SQL really can make SCADA even more powerful. That is why we build Ignition around SQL. Here are just a few of the advantages that Ignition offers because of SQL. SQL is well supported, IT standard that your IT department will understand. This lets you fully leverage the expertise your company already has instead of fighting with them on proprietary systems. SQL is very flexible, so it can fit whatever process you need it to do. This allows Ignition to conform to what you need instead of you conforming to it. With SQL, you're in control. You have the ability to make it do what you want, and uh, which really allows you to innovate creative solutions for your company. SQL facilitates total enterprise connections, which can make your company faster, more well-informed, more connected, and ultimately more profitable. So I've talked about how SQL and SCADA can work together. Now let's show it in action by doing a simple demonstration in Ignition. In this demo, we're going to go through a few SQL basics as well as get into a few more advanced things. So we're going to first install a database. We're going to show you that installing a database like MySQL is very approachable and easy. We're going to connect Ignition to a database, and we'll connect to that MySQL database that we installed. We're going to log historical data to a SQL database. And uh, we, can, we can do it using a Storian, and we can use it, do it using transaction groups. We're also going to show you how to build dynamic SQL queries on screen. And then lastly, we're going to show you how to use already existing data to fill in a pie chart or a bar chart. So let's get started. Let's first look at installing a database. So you can go to a, a MySQL.com or many different websites. Microsoft SQL Server has a free edition. Oracle has a free edition. And you can download the database. So I went to MySQL.com and I've installed or I've downloaded the MySQL database. And so I'm going to go ahead and run the installer. It's quite simple to do. So really we just kind of follow the steps. Databases are meant to be easy to use. So we just kind of go through the simple installation. and once it's uh, done installing, we can go ahead and con configure it and get connected to the database. So it just takes a matter of minutes to really get it up and running. OK, so now it's installed. So we're going to go ahead and configure the database. And that is just to, to select what username, password you want to use by default, and um, you know how you want the how you want MySQL to start up when the machine reboots. There's a couple things like that that we look into. Okay, so I'll go to the configuration. Just kind of step through all the, just go through the basics of installing the database. Don't need to do much, but I, right here I need to give it the password to use by default. So I'm going to give it password. And then we go next, and basically that's it. So now it's going to execute this, uh, this last part where it's going to just start up the MySQL database, and it's going to get us, get us ready to connect to it. And that's it. So as you can see, it doesn't take very long to install MySQL. Now there's also tools that you want to install with databases, and MySQL has a tool called the MySQL Workbench. And with this tool, it allows us to actually look into the database and see the raw data, add new database tables, add new uh, schemas, and really back up and restore the database. It's a, it's a great tool, and every database system out there has one. So all we've got to do is install these two simple pieces. We just go through the, the, the little steps, basically using all the defaults, and we're ready to go. MySQL couldn't be more approachable than, in order, than doing what we're doing here. So once uh, we get this all installed, it's very easy for us to go and connect up to that database. Remember, we gave it that password there through the installer, so that's what we can tell Ignition on how to connect to the database. OK. 
Okay, so that part's done. And I'm now going to go ahead and configure Ignition. So here is the, I already have Ignition installed on this machine, and this is the Gateway web page. I'm going to go to the configuration section, and inside the configuration section, we can get Ignition connected to one or more databases. Over here, left-hand side, databases, connections. So here I can add a new, I can create a new database connection, and I can choose any one of these drivers. So we can look at MySQL, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, Postgres, DB2, etc. I'm going to choose MySQL, go next, I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it MySQL. It's on my local machine. The database is called test, so we get by default in MySQL. And I'm going to choose, put my username and password in there, root and my password password that I entered into the installer. Come down to the bottom, I create a new database connection, and that's it. We, you can see that it is valid, so we are connected. So I, I just installed a database from scratch and got Ignition connected to it. And so it's very, very easy to work with. Now that we have that going, let's look at doing some things with the database, such as logging historical data and uh, viewing data from the database. So the first thing we're going to do is log historical data, and there's two ways we can do that. One is we can use Ignition's built-in historian, where we can right-click on our tags, go to history, store history for the tag, and select the database we want to log to, such as the MySQL on my local machine. I can also select the rate which I want to log, we can tune it, we can do all of this, press OK, Ignition is now taking care of logging the data in the database for us. It's doing all of that work. Um, now to take advantage of that, we can simply put a chart on a window, such as an easy chart graph. This graph is designed to minimize configuration, so we can just simply drag our tags onto it, and now we can see our live historical data. That data is now getting logged into a standard database, and we can go into the database if we wanted to. Look at the database query browser, and we could simply go to our MySQL database, and here's all the data that Ignition has put in there for us automatically. Now, if we already have database connections, we can look at uh, our other data that's already in there. We can see what's in the database, and we can start looking at it in the screens. Another way that we can log simple historical data is using a transaction group. We have one called the historical group. This is where you can, you can be in control of the data that you log. So rather than letting our historian take care of all that work, you can map it to whatever tables you want. So I'll use my same five sign tags. I'll log every second to a table called sign history. And I'll go to my MySQL database. And I'll let Ignition create the table, store a timestamp, store a quality code. I can delete records after a certain period of time, like one year. And that's it. We can now save this, let it start up, let it start running. And if I go and look at the database and I refresh it, you'll see that every second a new record gets inserted into our database with those values. And we can simply use SQL, to, uh, the language, to bring this data back, do averages, min, maxes, look at data between certain dates, and so on. To give you an idea of how we can leverage the language itself to bring data back to the screens, well, I'm going to show you how to build dynamic queries. And so. I already have some data in my sample database for customers. So let's say I want to bring customers back in a table, and I want them to be able to search through it. So I can put a table onto a window, and I can link the table, I can bind the table to an SQL query. I can just type one in. If I know the language, I can say select star from my customer's table. And I come down here and use my sample database, and go ahead and press OK, and I can see all of my data coming back from that table. Very quick and easy to query that data. With the SQL language, you can do so much. You can say, order by the name. You can add a where clause to filter the data. You can really look at it any way that you want. So I'm going to order by the name in ascending order. So I get that there. I can also put a, a text box right on top of the table to do filtering, to search through the data, where I can now add a where clause to my SQL query. I can say here at the very end, where the name is like, and right in the middle, I can bring in the text boxes text. So now I'm making this a dynamic SQL query. It's dependent on something else. So when that something else changes, like if I want to search for minis, it's going to run that query again, and here you can see my data coming back for all the minis. You can take that one step further, and you can use a drop-down list, and you can have multiple things in the window that could filter your table. So I can have a drop-down list here, 
that basically looks at, uh, it selects the distinct name, or sorry, state, from our customer's table. So and I'll order, order by the state in ascending order. So I'm basically going to bring back all of the distinct states. And the, the language lets you do things like this. And so I'm going to do that just once. I'm going to polling off. I'm not, I don't want to keep polling on that one, but I pressed OK. And now in my drop down list, I can see states. And I can use that in my filter. Again, I can go back to the table. And on the data, I can add an, another, another ad, an item to the where clause that says where state equals, and I can bring in the drop downs selected string value. And so now you can see I'm bringing back all of the Quebecs. If I go in here and look at for, for California, I can bring back all the Californias. The idea is that Ignition and databases can work very nicely together. And knowing the SQL language can really empower you. Another thing that you can do with SQL is you can basically use the language to make very, turn raw data into more useful information, such as pie charts and bar charts. So I've been, I've been logging uh, alerts. I have alerts set up on all my ramp tags. I've been logging them to the database. Once I log them, I could bring them back. Of course, we can bring them back in a table. And I could say, select star from alert log. And if I do that, if I bring back just all the alerts, it's the raw data. And that would, you know, somebody has to go through the table and look at it, what's going on. Well, rather than doing that, it'd be better if we can turn it into a pie chart or a bar chart. So I can put a pie chart here. And I can link the pie chart to an SQL query. Again, knowing the language can empower you. So I can say, bring back the display path. And I want to bring back the count of the alarm. So I want for each set of alarms, in, uh, each individual alarm, I want to get a count of how many times it occurred in history. So I'm going to do a thing called grouping, where I can group by the display path. And I can order by that display path as well. So I'll do that query just once. And um, let me go ahead and select the appropriate database here. I'm going to go through my sample database. And so here I can bring back, you can see all my machines. I have a few machines, and I can see that machine A is causing the biggest problem. So I can do the same thing, but rather than looking at the count, I can maybe do a, a sum of the, of the duration. So I, there's a function in my SQL that's called timestamp diff. I can see in seconds. The, um, the active timestamp basically minus the, or the clear timestamp minus the active timestamp. So I do that, and now I can get the duration. And so I can look at this in more powerful ways in Ignition, just by looking at that single language a little bit further. So hopefully it gives you a really good idea of what you can do with the SQL language, and uh, making dynamic queries, and bringing that data in, putting data into the database and bring it, uh, bring it back, it, there's just a lot of power that SQL gives you, and uh, hopefully you can see that here with my demo. So I'm going to turn it back over to Don now. Travis, thanks, thanks a lot. That was great. Much appreciated. And I do want to say that you have, uh, all of you, you have a tab for questions on the console. So take advantage of it. You can put in questions throughout the panelists' talk. And we're going to leave you about 15 minutes at the end to get to as many questions. Some of you have been working with us before. Uh, know it already. I already see questions lining up in the queue, but I want to let everyone know that we will get to as many of those questions as we possibly can. Uh, also, now I think it's time really that we want to open up the forum to our featured panelists, Jack Comer of Process Network Plus, Ted Krebis of Sherwin Williams, and Dan Perdo of Sherwin Williams. As I mentioned earlier, Jack's an integrator, and uh, he has you know helped uh, other companies uh, incorporate SQL. Uh, with their SCADA systems, and Ted and Dan work for Sherwin-Williams where they've been able to help that company make better use of SQL. So I think these will give unique perspectives uh, and give you some sort of a good view on how combining SQL with SCADA can impact your company or your enterprise. So I guess well, what I'd like to do is uh, discuss how you gentlemen have used SQL with your SCADA systems and how using SQL has really changed things for your respective businesses. So I'll throw that question out there just here as a general question. And maybe we can start with Jack, and then I'll have you know certainly Ted and, and Dan on that. But let's start with Jack, and, and you share a little bit from your viewpoint, your thoughts on this. So the overall question to the panelists, you can take it and run, is what advantages have you seen using SQL and SCADA together? So Jack, over to you. All right. Um, I've been working in the control systems business since 1972, and uh, 
we started using SQL uh, with the HMI products back in early 1990. In fact, we had sold a project to a uh, brewing company that we included not only SQL Server, but uh, Windows NT, which Windows NT had to come out before SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server could be released. So as that project went on, I was nervous about the when it was going to make it, but it made it just in time. So we started uh, using Microsoft SQL Server, I think it was about 92 or so. And it was painful uh, because the uh, HMI software really, um, a lot of the attitude was, why do you want to do that? I mean, we're doing control panel replacements. What in the world do you need a database for? Well, my project needed uh, recipe management and records of each of the brews, and database was a SQL database was the best way to do that. Um, and so we've been using it with our SCADA packages, you know, for 20 years now. Uh, but it's always been painful. It's been much easier to get the data out of the HMI and into the SQL database. But we even had a funny story where somebody later asked us, uh, you know, we need reports. Oh, yeah, of course you do. I mean, what good is the data without reports? But that was a painful thing to do, especially if you wanted to tr try to uh, show this data in the HMI. So we have been painfully doing that. Our, our company uh, uh, motto is total systems integration from factory floor to annual report. And a lot of our competitors didn't understand what we were talking about there. Um, but I felt that you know any information that you store in a database, whether it's the corporate business databases or the um, SCADA databases, needed to be available to both parties, to everybody that needed it. Uh, we even brought uh, financial data back down to the uh, SCADA so that the shifts saw their relative price per unit produced and created some great uh, competition between the uh, different ships. Um, so the other thing that, that SCADA has needed are historians. And the proprietary historians that are available from a number of companies um, drive IT people crazy because they're proprietary databases and you have to do funky things to um, get the data in and out. And that's where Ignition came along and it was the answer to prayer. In that it's database centric and it does the same things that the rest of the HMIs did as far as communicating to plant floor, floor equipment through PLCs and RTUs and things like that. But it made this getting the data like Travis just showed you those transaction groups. You can do that in seconds and then have it coming back into a trend or into a table um, displayed in ignition uh, within minutes, really less than that. I mean, it's just it's made our life um, so much better. Um, one of the places where we've used it is a historian, and it's just straight uh, ignition. Uh, nothing different than the standard package, and we've got 25,000 tags um, that are being recorded. Uh, 16,000 of them are, are at one-second intervals, uh, 8,000 are at 250 millisecond intervals, and then there's a handful that are at much faster, um, and we've tested some outrageously fast speeds, and uh, we don't leave them in place because it wasn't wasn't necessary, but that system is, uh, you know, is just amazing, and it, it's it's on a pretty powerful server. But um, Ignition is only using one percent of the processor maximum. I see is three percent, and a gig out of the sixty-four gigs of memory we put in there to make sure we had enough. So between the ability to gather data, generate reports, and then do the historian-type functions, 
Uh, I mean, it's all done in standard SQL databases, which means that your IT departments are familiar with all this. They have all the tools that they need for backing up the data, um, you know, transferring it, uh, replicating it. They're all, it's all available. It's not some proprietary system. Um, one of the IT guys just last week on that big system I was talking about, we needed to upgrade uh, Ignition to the newest version. And he said, oh, what's that going to take? And I said, well, download this file. And he did. And within um, three minutes, we had updated the whole system to the latest version. And there was a loss of communication to the people that were up of about 45 seconds. And the IT guy said, I, I've not seen this before. He said, this is unbelievable. You found some good guys uh, with this software. So Ignition being database centric is fabulous. Jack, thanks a lot. I really appreciate that. And, and I'll already see some questions coming in for you. So we'll, we'll get to those after we get a chance to hear from, from uh, Ted and Dan. With uh, that, as a little background on uh, Jack and what he's doing, I'm going to turn it over to Ted and Dan with Sherwin-Williams. So uh, take it away. Uh, those are some very powerful points that Jack just put out, and uh, we agree completely with them. Um, basically, because Ignition seamlessly connects the PLCs and databases, we have built applications that put industrial data in a context the business can easily understand. And I'd like to leave you with a few points. Uh, first off, SCADA systems have historically been used by operators and their uh, supervisors. But by adding business system information to the controls data, you can now impact the entire facility. Something as simple as adding customer order to controls data can allow your quality department to see sensory inputs that may have adversely affected your products. Purchasing personnel can get insight into inventory levels stored in the PLC. Plant scheduling can be updated with live order information. There's all kinds of process improvement projects you can have. The list goes on. Another point I'd like to make is leverage your existing IT infrastructure. Most companies already have a mature business system using databases that are accessible to Ignition. Query them. Query those databases you already have to add to your project in Ignition. And Dan has some excellent examples that he's going to show you in a minute. At an absolute minimum, don't require a user to update an existing business system, then come over to your new Ignition application and update it also. Don't reinvent the wheel. And my last point is, let SQL be another tool in your tool belt. SQL provides a wealth of functions and analytical tools that you can take advantage of. For example, uh, we use SQL for cube and roll-up functions for some of our reporting. Powerful computational information placed at plant personnel's fingertips. This is not even mentioning the additional coding elements that can be leveraged in the database itself, such as triggers, stored procedures, database functions, etc. And now I'm going to turn over to Dan to walk you through, and you'll see a, a, an example that illustrates uh, some of this functionality using Ignition. All right. Thanks, Ted. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, I'd like to go through a short example of how we can use a SQL database to uh, make your logged PLC data more powerful and kind of using a database or IT-minded methodology. And uh, this will expand a little bit on the demo that Travis just gave you. So if we go to the next slide. Uh, we'll see basically some plain raw data uh, on the left, which is how it would look in the database, and then also just uh, ignition trend of that on the right. Um, this is stored using a standard ignition transaction group like Travis showed you. And uh, to me, this raw data is kind of boring. Um, it may be useful to an engineer or someone intimately uh, familiar with some of the controlled information, but maybe not so much the rest of the factory. Think operations managers or some of your quality staff. Uh, usually, users like that want to see what order was running, uh, how much did the order require, what type of product or recipe was that order, who was running it, what shift were they on. Uh, 
Uh, now, to start uh, being able to expose some of that information, we need to give this raw data some context. To do that, you'll notice uh, circled there on the table, we added another column, and this is uh, order number column. Now, we can get that order number into addition in a number of ways. Um, we could query an existing IT database uh, that's running an existing MES system, or maybe it's a database that's running one of the ignition MES modules. Uh, and to get that, we can have SQL tags that run queries. We can have Python scripts that run queries and maybe massage or decode or format the data. We can even have ignition SQL tags that reside inside the database. So, so really, there's a lot of options. Or we could also have uh, the HMI, you know, the operator enter in that order number. But like Ted said, we generally try to avoid that because usually uh, in a lot of facilities you'll find that already exists somewhere. Now also above the chart on the right, you'll notice there's a little ignition table now. And basically using SQL, uh, we can get the minimum and maximum times we log for that order number in that raw data. And basically by doing that, uh, you can see there's order number and a start and end time we can actually tie the chart and table together. So when the user selects a row, it's basically going to dynamically bind the start and end time. So now, instead of just this uh, long date range of values moving around, now you can actually collect an order and see what was happening uh, in a context that the business cares about a little more. So this is a good start, but maybe we want to see some additional attributes beyond the order. So to do that, we're going to want a SQL join to another table. Now we can see below in the lower left, we have a real simple uh, segment of an order table that has order number, the recipe, the order size, operator, and their shift. Now we can join those tables using standard SQL syntax and, and put that into our table. So now we have the same table where you can dynamically drive your chart, but now there's some extra information in there. We can see shift, the operator, batch size, um, and so forth. And Really, we can do this multiple times uh, over and over again, you can add all kinds of different attributes. And again, utilize uh, existing systems out there or utilize systems that, that are necessary for the business already. Um, this connectivity will allow the SCADA system to always be in sync with your business system. And as Ted said, we're not reinventing the wheel, but leveraging existing infrastructure. Um, we can actually take it a step further now and expand the system even more. Now we've added two more columns uh, for factory ID and device ID. Doing this, we can actually store multiple devices in the table, as well as multiple devices in multiple factories. Now we can use the same table and same queries for multiple pieces of equipment across an entire enterprise. And similar to what Travis did earlier in his demo, we can add drop-down lists to the ignition screen. So you can filter your table by plants, devices, operators, shifts, etc. cetera. Uh, this can basically be done to create custom uh, filters for, for all of the different attributes of your process. And this will continue to expand the functionality of this screen. And really designing in this manner saves time because we're, we're constantly adding and, and allowing more flexibility and power to the user without having to develop a screen for every type of filter. Um, you know, obviously this table is going to get larger over time if we have multiple pieces of equipment, multiple factories. But there are standard database techniques out there, uh, primarily indexes and partitions, that will allow us to scale gracefully. And, and by scale gracefully, I mean that even as the table grows very, very large, the queries will remain fast. And actually, Ignition will handle some of that for you automatically when you create these tables. And really, the point here, uh, the growth of this screen, is to show how enterprise systems develop. You know, we use a common database for multiple pieces of equipment, multiple sites, and we utilize and expand our existing Ignition screens that are driven by the database to give a common reporting environment across an entire enterprise. Uh, even further, we can continue to derive more data once it's logged. Um, you can see I have a real simple query up top where basically we're comparing VAL1 and VAL2. And maybe if uh, VAL2 is greater than VAL1, that's a condition we want to highlight. So basically in SQL, without having to log anything else, we can do this comparison in the query and get an extra column in our result set. And you can see in the graph basically we can highlight that 0 or 1 maybe with a you know red bar or something like that. And you may find when storing data like this that you'll re revisit the same table many times and continue to find new pieces of information that you can derive with SQL without any new PLC code or any new wiring costs. Um, I also want to note that time series data is not just for trending. Uh, we can roll up the data by order, by recipe, by operator, and so forth. And, and by doing that, you can provide side-by-side uh, -side run comparisons, scorecards, averages, mins, maxes, run rates, uh, 
uh, dynamic calculations based off of attributes elsewhere in the database, and really it just goes on and on. And, and really that kind of drives home the point that SQL is extremely flexible and the syntax is very straightforward. It's an elegant language. And I really want to encourage everyone out there who's uh, either new to Ignition and databases or maybe existing Ignition developers who aren't as familiar with the databases uh, to learn about SQL and also learn about the different databases used by your company or, or by your customers. You know, uh, as Travis said before, there's a lot of online resources, books, there's the Ignition forum, there's Ignition training. There's a lot of things that can get you up to speed. And really, once you're up to speed and you start to think uh, in a database-centric manner and like a database developer, um, I think you'll find, that, as we have here, a lot of creative ways to really increase the value and power your SCADA applications. Really, the sky's the limit once you start to uh, fully realize the, the wealth of information you can derive. Um, that's really it for me. Uh, Ted, was there anything else you wanted to add? Um, just to reiterate some of the many ways that you can get information uh, from your IT system into Ignition. I mean, you have uh, a host of different options here. You have Python scripts that can select and update tags, tags driven by SQL queries, historical tags, database-driven tags, uh, Old Faithful, the uh, transaction group. That's one that we like here at Sherwin. Um, so there's a number of different mechanisms that Ignition provides you. Now, the needs of your application will determine which of these best fits your program. Great. Great. Chad, Dan, thank you very much. I totally appreciate that. And I'll tell you, there's quite a, uh, quite a few questions in the queue. So I hope uh, you guys and Jack and Travis are ready to dig into it. Just a quick review of some takeaways. Three main ways people can literally redefine how you view and use your SCADA system. People enrich its time series data. SQL empowers asking questions. SQL saves time and money. If you want to learn more about SQL and data, you can you know, go to the resources section, which, uh, which uh, Ted just mentioned. And really, our website, our forum, um, we have a white paper on it that goes along with this webinar. And it really is part of the overall process that we've been uh, looking at with uh, within inductive automation. Some of you are familiar with it. We just finished the three-part series uh, on Design Like a Pro. And what we're trying to do here is, just in keeping with our mission, is, is get into some of these topics, do some white paper work on it, follow up with webinars, show applications, and give you an opportunity to, to do as much as you can to self-educate and, and find ways to, to really really get utilization inside your own, uh, your own enterprises. With that, there's going to be a second part to SQL called SQL the Midas Touch, turning time series data into enterprise gold. You can see the time here. Uh, it's July 31st, same time, on uh, 9 to 10 Pacific Standard Time, and you can go to our website uh, to sign up for it. So now, as we move into the Q&A section, I want to, uh, I'll just sort of be grabbing them off, Travis, and I'll throw them to you or to Jack or, or Ted or, or Dan, and you don't all have to comment on it, but um, I'll give you an opportunity to, to say something on it if you want to. Um, first off, uh, is if I could, just, just a starting question is, what are some good types of SQL databases for beginners to use. Travis, you just want to comment on that? Sure. So uh, for beginners, the, there's, there's a number of databases that are, are easy and accessible to uh, start with. As you saw earlier in my demonstration, I start with, with MySQL. MySQL is a free uh, open source database that is, is the most popular database in the world. It's very, very robust, very uh, you know, good database to use. Most of our customers here at Adaptive Automation use MySQL because it's just so approachable, easy to install, easy to connect to and to work with. But there is also others. Um, Oracle has a free edition of their database, and Microsoft SQL Server has a free edition. So if your IT department, your company, standardized, let's say, on Microsoft SQL Server, well, rather than uh, starting with a whole brand new database like MySQL, go get the SQL Express, the free version of that Microsoft database, and that way you can get, uh, get accustomed to it. You know, start learning how the database works, and then you know, that will help you merge in with the IT department and kind of understand the same language there. Travis, there were some questions at the beginning. Just uh, one from Fernando. Can you just clarify what's the difference between a story and, and SQL? I know you went over some of that. You may have got it answered in the process. Well, if, if, we're, if we're talking about um, Ignition, uh, uh, you know, the historian built into Ignition utilizes SQL. Now, traditionally, historians they don't utilize SQL. They have some proprietary file format that they store their data to. So it's not accessible by other applications, meaning I, I can't see what that format looks like, what data is in there. I have to have some tool 
to understand that structure in order to get it out. And so historians have, have primarily done that um, you know, in, in history here. With Ignition, we store it into an actual SQL database. And with that, the data is in a more open format that I can use the SQL language to go and grab information from those tables. I can you know, put stuff in there, I can grab stuff out. The SQL language is designed to access and manipulate that database. So it's, it's very easy to say, here, I want this data, and it will give it to you. So it's more open than an actual process historian uh, historically. So Travis, the next question is, if you, uh, how do SQL databases get affected when server revisions and upgradation uh, take place? Um, how, how, how do SQL databases get affected? Yeah. They, uh, it's not, not too much. Uh, databases, for the most part, when you upgrade machines, you know, databases um, historically don't have too much of, you know, of problems getting upgraded as well. Uh, or, or working on the new platform. You know, MySQL has an addition for pretty much every version of Windows, Linux, uh, Mac, OS X, so it's there on every operating system. It's pretty easy to work with. And um, if, if we upgrade Ignition, of course, Ignition will always be able to continue to connect to, to databases as well. So primarily, it doesn't really have too much of an effect. Okay, great. So just a question for um, uh, overall, and for Ted, I'm going to throw it your direction, Ted is if you could have some lessons learned from your experiences using SCADA and SQL, could you maybe share a few lessons learned in the process? Because you guys have been doing this for a while. What can you share? Sure. Um, well, I guess I would say um, keep your database tables lean and mean. And as Dan had mentioned, uh, the use of indexes and table partitioning and sub-partitioning to keep your queries running fast. Nothing's worse than a, a new system, a new program that you add that begins to bog down over time. Yeah, it worked great the first three weeks, but then you know a month or two later, um, the, the performance degrades. And I guess along that line, I would say also if possible at some of the bigger companies, you can get if you can get any kind of DBA support, database administration support, to help you manage um, your custom databases. That's a tremendous asset to you. Uh, for you engineers out there, I would recommend that you take uh, some time out of your schedule and try to uh, introduce yourself to some of your IT staff. Um, there's some tremendous collaborations that you can bring to your company and great value. Great, thanks. Uh, this question I'm going to throw your direction, Jack, from uh, Joe Fallon. He says, how do SQL databases compare to historians in terms of capacity and throughput? I know you mentioned some things in that area, so can you take that one? Yes. Um, we installed some of the first historians that were offered by the traditional HMI vendors, and uh, you know they were very good, uh, compact data, you know, fast retrieval, um, but they usually were difficult to get the data out of, except using their special tools, and. Um, that one example that I'm talking about with the uh, company that has the 25,000 tags going into the database at that rate is we are generating data, um, you know, large amounts of data. But we put a, we knew we were going to do that. We put a 10 terabyte RAID 5 um, on that server. We've used about a terabyte of it. So far, it's been in place for coming up on a year, um, maybe maybe nine months. But anyway, um, the ability to get the data out, especially for the traditional uses like trending and stuff, is uh, because of some of the stuff that Ignition has uh, applied to this, um, we get trends up in seconds that are over a month period with lots of tags. Um, so the throughput, well, for one thing, we, we didn't, I didn't ever have a customer that asked us to store the data away faster than like five seconds, every five seconds. But we, we would do it for all the tags. Um, this customer wanted these fast things, which I said, I'm not sure we can do that. But it turned out that we could, and, and uh, the standard fastest that, that Ignition 
allows us like 100 milliseconds. And, uh, and we've tested it, those levels and it works just fine. The interesting thing is the transaction groups. If you have a specific group of tags you want to do history on and be able to analyze them quickly, you can set up a transaction group in addition to the historian and then have absolute normal SQL tables with just those values in them. So, I mean, it's, it's very impressive because the historian just comes along with it. Jack, thanks. Um, just a question I'm going to ask to Travis uh, from Brian. We're, well, where is the best place to go for SQL language reference? So there are a number of places you can go to uh, get help on the SQL language. That, like, like I said earlier, there's lots of good books you can uh, you can look at. There's good like uh, not Python, but SQL um, pocket books. Uh, like O'Reilly have makes a lot of good books on SQL. You can also go to some websites that, that just have tutorials that guide you through the SQL language. One really good one is SQLZoo.net. Uh, SQLZoo.net has it goes through the different um, queries. There's only four basic queries: there's select, update, insert, and delete. Um, so you only have to learn four query types. It's not that many, and it's not that complicated. SQLZoo.net has a really good uh, tutorial to go through. Also, like W3Schools um, dot I think it's dot, dot com or dot org. One of those is uh, has a lot of good reference on SQL itself and what the commands are, what's going on. So there are a number of places I would I would use those. I would also look for a good book on it. Great, thanks, Travis. So the next one is um, this is looking more at the at the enterprise view of things. Can we connect the stated data through SQL to SAP or other ERP? So certainly, I mean, if your ERP system or your SAP system has some sort of database link, like an ODBT connection, you can create. Of course, the connection can talk through that, and sometimes they expose that as a database connection with the language between the two. Um, a lot, most of the time, though, SAP systems uh, they do things through web services. And so we do have the ability to communicate with those systems through web services. So a number of things you can do. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, Dan and Ted. I, I believe that they're using some uh, higher level systems. And uh, ask that, I have a question to you guys. How do you guys connect your ERP systems? Um, well, yeah. good. Good. Basically, I mean, because of the power of the database and a database-centric model, what we can do is actually push information into tables that uh, we can isolate different groups and different business systems. They can read our tables, we can read theirs. So a lot of times we'll actually leverage the fact that there's a database in between us and that way uh, that will provide a degree of isolation. And the other thing is with SAP and with these Oracle um, eBusiness suites, a lot of times what they'll have is an interface table that you can pump information into. So with a database and, and again, once we get the information out of the PLC and into a standard database, then you can create database links to that from other systems, other business systems. And I think a lot of people are much more comfortable with an interface that is a table or a view, and they pull when they want to. It's a lot safer um, for a lot of big companies than, some, uh, than building a dependency. So that would be a simple way, uh, not intrusive way, of passing information from one system to another, and we leverage, leverage that um, considerably. Thank, thank you, thank you, guys. Great, thanks. So then, um, here's a question I'm going to throw to you, Travis, from Ben Jang. Is our IT uh, uses Oracle data? How easy to get data from Oracle database to SQL database? Um, so Oracle is already a database, so it's really quite easy to get connected to it. We have a native driver built into Ignition for Oracle, and literally all you got to do is get the IP address of your Oracle database. And uh, you have to have some username and password that will authenticate so that you could actually run those queries through the database. So it's, it's uh, pretty, pretty easy to work with that database. We have a number of customers who do use Oracle, and uh, it works really, really well. Travis, I'm just going to ask an add-on question. Have you noticed much difference between the different databases in terms of performance? Any, any comment on that, or maybe someone else wants to comment on it, too? Uh, yeah, there, there really isn't a noticeable difference between the different databases. Uh, I mean. Uh, Oracle and Microsoft SQL Server, you pay for those databases, and they have a lot more tools and facilities in place for um, for you, as you as especially as databases get large, um, they have much more like diagnostic tools and things. Uh, Oracle and Microsoft SQL do perform a little bit better than MySQL, the open source database, uh, be, because they're just they're definitely more robust. But 
you know, for, for most of our customers, a MySQL database performs just the same. There's not, not a big difference between the two. Cool. So just a comment then, question on security. What are the security tools available with Ignition? And uh, he's, that question is in relation to SQL and the data. Uh, in Ignition, of course, the, those database connections, uh, they can certainly, you can connect to a database through SSL or HTTPS. Uh, a lot of databases support that methodology and where the data being sent between the Ignition server and the database will be encrypted so that nobody can see what's going on between uh, the two. And that's one thing that people that people turn on, especially if uh, databases are accessed over the Internet. Um, and database, databases have a lot of security built into them as well as far as who can log in and what access rights they have. So, uh, you know, if they can actually only, if, if there's sometimes you can set up users that only have read-only privileges, or you can set up users that have read-write but only on certain tables. So there's a lot of granularity of security with SQL. And uh, with Ignition, we just natively work with that. Great. Thanks, Travis. You know, as we're, as we're sort of winding down with our time, I'm going to, um, I want to say two things. One is that on the on your page there, the final questions and comments page, you have listed uh, Jim and Vanessa and Myra and Shane, Raman and Melanie and Patricia. Is Please take advantage of these guys. We didn't get to all your questions. Follow up with whoever the county executive is you're working with. We can bring in uh, some of Travis's team uh, in support and, and training and service and do what we need to do to get all those questions answered. We're going to take a couple more questions here. And then I'm going to ask each of our panelists to do whatever they whatever they want to say in terms of wrapping up. So a, a couple of questions, and then we'll give you guys sort of a wrap-up time so we can stay pretty close to our hour. So this next question is from, from Kent. Is it clear how inductive automation can add? It is clear how inductive automation can add data to a SQL database. How well can inductive C and quotes data written to the same or a different database? So Ignition, and I'll follow up with another question that Kent had there, which was, uh, can more than one SQL database be accessed by inductive? Uh, you can connect up to one or more database connections, uh, and they can be different databases on different machines. If I connect to an Oracle database and a MySQL database and a SQL server, or two MySQLs, or any combination thereof. So does, there's no limit to the number of connections you can have. With that, each of those databases will have their own data. And Ignition, well, once we're connected, we have a way of browsing the database. There's a query browser that's built in, or you can see all the tables that are there, and you can see data in each one of those tables and get an idea of what's stored in there. And then really, it's, it's just learning the SQL language to bring that data back in ways that uh, you, that the way you want to bring it back, the way you're trying to query it. So yeah, you can definitely see what's already in the database and, uh, and make use of it. Great, Travis. I think what I'm going to do is uh, give each of you a chance to sort of say any final things you might want to say um, rather than try and get to all these questions. We will follow up, and please follow up with us and, and send an email. We'll make sure that we get to these questions. So uh, with that, let's go over to you, Jack, and uh, final comments. All right. Um, in our ignition systems, they're evenly split between MySQL and Microsoft SQL Server. Just thought that might be interesting to you, and um, I think that the what Ignition does is creates opportunities both for the customer, for the integrators, and really, I've been doing this a long time, and I've never seen anything like this. I think you can't afford not to use Ignition in your systems, whether you use it as to fill in holes where your existing systems don't uh, offer the things that. Ignition does, or as to replace existing systems or be used for new systems. I don't Thank think you can afford not to use it. Thank you. I, I unfortunately, I think I share your bias there. We tend to agree with that. So, but I appreciate that you're really finding value. And thanks. I want to thank you again for uh, taking time out and, and being a panelist today because I know you're you're very very busy. So, thanks, Jack. And with that, let's go to uh, Ted and Dan for uh, final comments. Um, Really, I think we just want to reiterate, um, you know, to, to really encourage people to get in there and learn SQL and uh, learn about what the company standards are out there, again, with customers or your own company, and and really start thinking in a, in a database-centric manner. Um, I know we only really discussed the historian aspect in reporting, but, but really when you get into the database, you can do recipe management, you can do downloads to equipment at set points, uh, you know, collect summary information at the end of a run. Uh, you can get into visual management and dashboards. Um, really, you can take it so many places and really make very powerful and dynamic applications using Ignition. And 
And, and what you'll find is, especially in the enterprise space, you can deploy very rapidly once you do that. And, and you'll have very dynamic, powerful applications. And um, really, we just want to, I guess we can't express enough how valuable the database is and the data model behind all of our ignition systems. So, you know, really to everyone out there, you know, get in contact with, with Travis and his team or get out there and read and, and there's a lot of resources and I think uh, it'll really pay off for everyone. Thank you very much. And with that, I'm, uh, I really want to say thank you again to Ted and Dan for also taking time out of your schedules. And Travis, final comments. So, um, I just want to mention that there are also you know, places here you can get help on the, the language as well. We do cover that in, in our training classes here a little bit. Uh, so I want to just kind of reiterate the training classes we have. We have a five-day core ignition class that covers the basics of ignition and shows all the features from real-time status control to historical data trending to uh, using transaction groups to using a little bit of scripting and alerting. A lot of features that we cover in that core class. Uh, it's a five-day class. That on our website, you'll see the upcoming events that are there. There's also a three-day advanced class on Ignition. That, that one really does cover the power of SQL, especially with Ignition. We, we do a lot of, of uh, you know, SQL queries and a lot with databases. So I'd, I recommend if you want to learn a lot more about databases to, to attend our advanced class. And we also do a, a four-day OEE downtime class. Um, that uh, utilizes the MES suite of modules that we have here at Ignition. And the, all of those modules definitely take advantage of SQL as well. And we show in that class how we can uh, use both of them to create a very customized system that fits your needs. So lots of uh, resources here to get uh, help on our website and the events page. You can see when those are coming up. And you can always give us a call or uh, go to our forum on the website if you have further questions. Great, Travis. Thanks a lot. And with that, we shot over our time just a couple of minutes. Thanks so much for your attention. Thanks again to all of our panelists. And with that, we are concluded with today's session. Have a great afternoon.